For this problem, we're given that time equals t greater than or equal to zero. The velocity of the body is given as this one. Uh, your t is in terms of uh, seconds and it's moving along this axis here, the s. Uh, s represents the displacement. It says find the body's acceleration each time the velocity is zero. So we have to first find out where this velocity is zero. If it's zero, it's not moving. Once we find those times, then we'll put them into the acceleration function. First, let's find the places where the velocity is equal to zero. We're going to set this original function they gave us equal to zero. So zero equals t squared minus 4t plus 3. And to set that equal to zero, we're just going to now do some factoring to find the times. For this, we can use 1 and 3. Both of them are going to be negative to get the negative term in the middle. Set them equal to zero, you're going to get t equals 1 and 3 seconds. Okay, so now we know that, that the, the times where the velocity is going to be uh, zero. Next, I need to put these times into the acceleration function. So let's do a of, let's find a of t. We have to take the derivative of our velocity, and you're going to get 2t minus 4. So now we're just going to put in our two times into here, and that's going to give us the answers we're looking for. We want to find the body's acceleration each time the velocity is zero. So we're going to do a of 1, 2 times 1 minus 4. I would get ne negative 2, and then. I'm going to find a of 3, 6 minus 4 is going to be uh, positive 2, and so that would be our answers. There's no units that are given on this, so I don't need to put any units of my answer. These are the two answers they're looking for, uh, negative 2 and 2. For part B, when is the body moving forward and when is it moving backward? We already found in part A that it's not moving at 1 and 3 seconds. Like I showed before in a previous example, what you want to do here is set up a table. And I'm going to start with zero because that's where the time begins. And then I'm going to put in uh, one and three seconds. And then this last part is going to keep on going forever, so we don't really have an endpoint here like I had before in the previous example. Uh, in this case, one and three seconds we have on there because that's the places where it's not moving, and zero is where this begins. So I need to pick a test point and put it into each of these to find out whether it's moving in the positive direction or in the negative direction. If it's moving forward, that means you'll see a plus inside there. If it's moving backwards, you'll have a minus. So I'm going to test 0.5. And the 0.5, I've got to put it into here, putting it into the original velocity function that was given to us. So I'm putting in 0.5 squared minus 4 times 0.5 plus 3, putting that in there. And when I do that, it's going to give me a plus. So I know it's moving in the positive direction between 0 and 1. Next, I want to pick a test point between 1 and 3. So I'm going to test here. Uh, let's use 2 because it will be easier to put in. So I'm going to put 2 in there. Okay, so 2 is a number between 1 and 3. I'm going to put that in here. 2 squared is 4 minus 8, negative plus 3. Gives us a negative number as a result, so I get it's moving backwards between 1 and 3 seconds. Then I'll put in any number greater than 3, doesn't matter. I'm going to test 4. So 4 I'll put in here. 4 squared, 16 minus 16 is 0, plus 3 positive. So this is my final sign configuration. Now I see that it changes directions at 1 and 3 seconds. We talked about that before in a previous example, but it's not asking us for a change in direction. It's only asking us for when is it moving forward and backward. So I need to put this in interval notation. So let's do forward. Forward means that the ones where it has a plus. Zero is included because you have an equal sign underneath there. So we're going to do from 0 to 1 seconds, and then also from 3 to infinity. Now I'm not putting brackets on 1 and 3 because 1 and 3, it's actually not moving at all. So 
um, it's not considered plus or minus at that point, the velocity is zero, so that's why I'm not including uh, these here, one and three, I have parentheses on those. Anything going to infinity, infinity or negative infinity, of course, will always have a, a parenthesis on it. Let's look at backward. Okay, backward is where we have a negative sign. That's going to happen between one and three. So between one and three, we're just writing that as in uh, interval notation. Again, we're not including the endpoints. Same reason I mentioned before for this one. For part C, it's asking us when is the body's velocity increasing or decreasing. Let's think about what that means. If your velocity is increasing, that means that your acceleration must be positive. If you're driving on the road and you want to increase your speed, you're going to press on the accelerator. That's going to increase your acceleration. That's going to also uh, increase your velocity. Likewise, if the acceleration is negative, so like for instance, if you're, if you're braking, you're going to have a negative acceleration at that point. That means your velocity is going to be decreasing. So we need to, to find out, first of all, where the velocity is zero. We're going to make another sign chart like we did before in part B uh, in order to figure that out. Here's the acceleration that we did originally in part A, 2t minus 4. We're going to set that equal to zero. If you set that equal to zero, you're going to get two seconds. Again, your time starts out at zero. So I'm going to make a chart starting with zero, and I'm going to put two on there because that's where the acceleration uh, is zero. I'm going to put uh, some test numbers. Test the number between zero and two, and also from two to infinity. I'll put those into my acceleration function. For here, I can test any number between zero and two, the one I'll pick is going to be 1. Put 1 in here, 2 times 1 minus 4, that's negative. So between 0 and 2 seconds, I have a negative acceleration. Then I'm going to test number greater than 2, I'll use 3. 3 goes into here, 6 minus 4 is 2, that's a positive number. So what I can say here is for the decreasing intervals, Okay, so first we're going to look at where the body's velocity is decreasing. That's where I have a negative for my acceleration. So it's going to be decreasing from 0 to 2. And 0 we are going to include because, again, you have the equal center in each. So you've got to use a bracket on the end there. But 2 itself, since the acceleration is 0, it's not positive or negative. We'll use a parenthesis there. And then we're also going to look at the interval for increasing. Increasing is where the uh, acceleration is positive. That's going to be 2 with, with a parenthesis. That's going to go to infinity. So the body's velocity is increasing on this interval from 2 to infinity. Velocity is decreasing from 0 to 2, and 0 is going to be included.